live yet? Okay, we are live, sir. We can start. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to have uh, Dr. Arun Gupta give his talk on arthroscopy, which unfortunately, the last time round was plagued with some um, internet connectivity problems. And uh, hopefully, today will be better because he's got a new internet line set up just for this talk now. So, Arvind, uh, take it away. Can you increase the size? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, better. Yeah, now it's fine. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. So, uh, so I'll start with the basic of knee orthoscopy and then ACL uh, reconstruction part. So in basic of knee orthoscopy, first uh, we should be aware about the instrument, like this is uh, orthoscope, the 30 degree, 70 degree, 90 degree part, and this get connected with uh, the light source, which illuminate the intraarticular knee structure. And this can be moved uh, above, below, below, above. And usually we see opposite to the this the light source cable so if it is up like we are seeing the down and this get connected with the camera which uh, uh, transmit the intraarticular image to the monitor about the holding uh, about the movement of this camera this may be forward backward rotation of the camera or cable can be done then the sidewise movement then the upward and the downward movement all these movement can be possible with the camera. About the holding, if you hold with two finger, this is not very a strong grip. So for better grip, hold with the thumb and palm with free your finger for the rotation of your light cable. At the same time, about the adjustment of the camera, it should be at proper distance from the object, which we are seeing if you are too close, then this will be very magnified. At the same time, if we are too far, then it will be very shorter. So place this at very appropriate distance. That is very, very important. Most of the time, uh, the position is supine with tunica in. And I usually do with uh, leg holding position, leg uh, hanging side the table. Like, like this, you can see the leg is hanging the side of the table. And if any uh, thing like any movement like figure of four in each lateral compartment, we can see better, that can be done. At the same time, if you need to place the knee at 90 degree at table, so this can be flexed with the hand on the thigh by assistant, and we can see there. And after doing this, we should start marking of the knee, particularly in early days of the knee orthoscopy. So first the patella marking should be done. Then then the patella uh, tibial tuberosity part should be done. And then the patellar tendon and the joint uh, joint line. These uh, marking are very important because many a time in early days the knee gets swollen because of lot of fluid, and after that, the identifying the normal structure become very difficult. These are the other position can be used like this position, uh, working in the posterior lateral and the posterior medial part with this position is very easy and other position like foot with the bar there can also be used. 
in the portal the enterolateral and the enteromedial portal these two portal are the very common 80% of the work can be done with these two portal and the rest there are many other accessory portal like and this uh, in enterolateral portal usually 1 cm below the lower pole of the patella and 1 cm lateral to the patella tendon and that usually done at angle of 90 degree we insert the trocar in the in the intercondylar area and then we start flexing the knee and at 30 degree we pass our trocar from intercondylar to the suprapatellar area and once in the suprapatellar area then we insert the camera part in then check for the water flow and then start moving the scope toward the medial compartment and once in the medial compartment it is reached then we do flexion of the knee. So once knee get flex, then the enteromedial portal should be met. This would be under vision with uh, needle in and needle should be in the illuminated area. Here is the role of triangulation is there. And after making a stab, we should increase the diameter with hemostat. Like this, you can see here. You can see uh, the needle should be passed under vision above the meniscus. It should not damage the meniscus or any intraarticular structure. And once needle is in, then the stab should be made with the knife under vision again. Here you can see the knife is there. So similarly, other portal like posteromedial portal, which is very important for working in the posteromedial part, the landmark should be marked and then make the posteromedial portal like this. Here you can see the scope should be in the posteromedial area and light should be uh, towards the posteromedial part. And here transillumination part as well as this can be identified. Next is the superior lateral portal, which is usually around 2.5 centimeter above the superior lateral part of the patella. That is the lateral portal, lateral corner of the patella. And this is very good uh, portal to view for the patellofemoral articulation. Those who are having the current dislocation of the patella, this is very good portal to look for. Like this, uh, this is here the superior lateral portal is there. Then the posterior lateral portal. Uh, again, it is a soft spot between the lateral collateral ligament, lateral head of the gastrocnemia, and the posterior lateral TBL plate should be uh, identified. And then marking should be done. Once a scope in the posterior lateral gutter, then use your knife. And then the uh, portal should be created. This is again uh, important for the working in the postulateral area and reconstruction of the uh, PCL. The next is the SS3 lateral portal and the SS3 medial portal. Usually it is around 2.5 centimeter uh, lateral or medial from the patella tendon. And this uh, SS3 medial portal usually work for the making a tunnel in the femur for ACL reconstruction. Then the last is the central transpatellar portal of the gilkist usually and the knee is 90 degree flex and the one centimeter below the lower pole of the patella and the patella tendon is under tension. So this is the video in which we can see both uh, the intra-articular part as well as uh, extra-articular part.
there is some lag there. Yeah. Are you playing everything through videos? And a little bit is video is there, then the other part is by slide one. Okay, yeah. go ahead. We can see. Yeah, now it's okay. So next is the uh, basic of uh, entry. This is all about the portal and uh, the, uh, doing the diagnostic part of the knee all round. So next is the basic of anterior cruciate uh, ligament reconstruction. And this would be a start with the history and then the uh, physical examination. About the history, patient will give uh, the mechanism of injury we can identify. The ACL injury is around 70% of the ACL injury is non-contact injury. Only 30% is having contact injury, which may be direct or indirect. In mechanism, mostly it starts with the valgus knee. Then there is internal rotation of the femur and the external rotation of the tibia, as well as the posterior translation of femur. So next we can see how this uh, injury ha happened. So you can see the valgus of the knee with the leg foot is internally rotated and tibia is rotated externally. So this is the most common injury. The body is rotated internally, femur is internally rotated. Next, we can see uh, in very uh, slow motion, here you can see hip is rotated internally, tibia is externally and foot is rotated internally. And in this position, the femur goes posterior, tibia comes anteriorly, and the ACL injury happens. So whenever there is ACL injury, we should always look for the associated injury at the same time, because the associated injury chances is very high. So we can look for the anterolateral part at the same time in the posterior part of the medial side of the tibial condyle, because the femur gets stuck here. So maybe ramp lesion or posterior horn of medial minister. So after that, uh, we should do examination of the knee joint. The first is the anterior dior test, which is a high sensitivity in particular in chronic cases. In acute cases, it's not very high sensitive diagnostic thing. The knee should be 90 degree flex and your hand should grab the proximal part of the tibia and do translation of the tibia anteriorly. Usually more than seven to eight millimeter is taken as the positive. At the same time, you should look for the, whether the in point is firm or hard, because the in point should be the, uh, the soft one. If it is firm or hard, it means the ACL is intact. So there is grading also grade one, grade two, grade three, like zero to five millimeter anterior translation is grade one. And the five to 10 is grade two. And if it is more than 10 millimeter translated, translation, then it's grade three. Then the next is the pivot shift test. This is very uh, uh, specific test. If this test is positive, it means ACL is torn, but sensitivity is uh, not very high. And sometimes it's very difficult to do in OPD setting. It is very easy to appreciate during anesthesia. The uh, legs should be internally rotated and in valgus position. You can do the valgus from here or from here also. And from the extension, you start doing the flexion of the knee. And at the 30 degree of knee flexion, the knee get uh, reduced. The initially TBI is subluxated and then it get reduced at 30 degree. IT band reduced it uh, into the normal position. Next is the latchman test. It is very sensitive test in the uh, acute setting. In which the knee is usually 30 degree of flexion. Uh, that can be gained by placing the patient thigh over your thigh or holding the patient thigh with uh, your hand. So this is the 30 degree and with another hand, you can again translate the tibia anteriorly and look for any uh, hard point. It is not, it should be not there for test should be positive. But it should be very soft like this. Then you can do the valgus estes test or virus estes test at 20 degree at the same time you can, do this, you can do the 
tests at zero degree also. The next is the posterior door test for the PCR. You can also see the SAG test. The usually the patellar tendon is convex and at the 90 degree of knee flexion, but PCL is not there. So TVI has shifted posteriorly, so TAC SAG test is positive. At the same time, this test should be done very carefully in early days because many a time the translation, posterior translation of tibia from this position to anteriorly usually it taken as the anterior door test positive. But anterior door test positive when uh, should we tell when we should start the anterior translation of tibia and the patellar tendon is convex. So very frequently in early days this test get confused with the anterior door test. The next is the dial test. In 30 degree of knee flexion, look for the excessive external rotation in comparison to other. And it is positive, it means the posterior lateral corner is torn. So after this test, this should get confirmed with the MRI. And just to speak about something about the basic of the knee MRI. Uh, usually, either it should be started from the lateral side or the medial side. Lateral side, usually uh, the fibula is there or tibia is uh, the quadrangle. On the medial side, tibia is the triangle. So when there is single one or two film like this, so at this point we can identify this is the lateral side of the knee because the tibia is quadrangle. But this is the medial side of the knee because tibia is uh, the triangle. At the same time from the lateral to medial side, we initially we see the meniscus. Then in the central part, we can see the ACL, which is torn here. The PCL is there. Once PCL get finished, then you can see the posterior horn of lateral meniscus. Again, that looks torn here. So these, this is the very basic of the knee MRI. So this is the patient, uh, young patient having the is torn ACL. We can see this is the lateral part because this is the quadrangle part of the proximal tibia. At the same time, we can see there is some rent in the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus just near the root. And you can see this line is again passing in the posterior, posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. So after the making a diagnosis of uh, torn ACL, we can select the graft. So graft uh, may be hemistring one. So my preferred graft is hemistring, which may be a quadruple semi T. And if diameter is less than eight millimeter, then we should use the uh, gracilis with this uh, semi T. So that diameter should be eight or more than that. It should not be less than eight because if it is less, the chances of re tear uh, is very high. Next is the patellar tendon graft, which was used uh, earlier almost in 90% of the cases, but still it is used in many parts of the world. Uh, having advantage of the uh, very fast healing of this bone patellar tendon uh, with the bone at the same time of early return to the sports and the less lax laxity of this uh, graft uh, in the post-op period in comparison to hemistring. The next is the uh, this uh, uh, quadriceps tendon along with the bone. Then maybe peroneus longus and IT band that can be used in test of multi-ligament knee reconstruction or failed ACL reconstruction. So about the tendon harvesting, usually uh, two centimeter below the TBL tuberosity and two centimeter incision, this can be horizontal or vertical. Horizontal having advantage of less disturbance to the uh, infrapatellar bunch of the sartorius nerve. So after putting the skin incision, we can go the deep and separate the fascia over the sartorial fascia and then identify the upper border of uh, the sartorius. So this is the upper border of the sartorius we can see and as we pass from the upper border the next bump is uh, the semi T. You can see this is the bump, this is the semi T. So here we can put uh, an incision over the sartorius fascia with the knife and then we can uh, split the sartorial fascia with seizure in the line of the semi T. And after cutting this, uh, the sartorial fascia, 
we can use uh, the curve 90 degree angle and demarcation is very clear in between graceless and semi-t with this 90 degree of uh, the uh, artery fossa we can deliver this semi-t uh, then once it get delivered then it can, this can be cut here also or you can take the insertion part along with this tender so this will give you extra around two centimeter of graph length more at the same time since the part of periosteal is there so somebody says the chances of healing with this graft is very high so you can see there is two centimeter of extra graft with this and after that hold this uh, graft with the copper and usually there is three accessory band associated with this so you we, you can cut the and uh, this band, you, all these bands should be cut because if you not cut this, then there will be chances of slippage of this graph. And this you can uh, find, see the graft gets slippage because the band is still attached there. So always cut all the accessory band. Usually three band is with uh, the same MET or one to two band with the gracilis. So another band get cut, another band get cut. Now you have graph uh, to uh, make the uh, flex the knee and uh, palpate all uh, the accessory band any left with the help of finger. So you pass your finger and look for any band and there is another band that is the third one band is there. So take with the artery and again you cut with this uh, uh, knife or scissor. So all the three band get cut and after that uh, you pass uh, your tendon harvester, which can be closed one or open one. I usually prefer the open one, a closed one. And uh, this can be passed over this and hold the graft uh, gentle with the poker. And then you insert your harvester in with rotatory and push movement. So you can see uh, the then, and then your, at the same time, your knee flexion should be around 30 to 40 degrees. So you pass your tendon harvester with rotatory and push, rotate and push, rotate and push. Yeah. So this is almost most of the time it is in between 26 to 32 centimeters. So after this, uh, after this harvesting of this graph, you can see uh, the below the graph there is very good MCL is there so be careful all the time you should not damage this at the same time the upper border of sartorius and in if you find the diameter is less than eight so you can take out this uh, graceless tendon at the same time that is there so next is about the footprint of the ACL over the tibia so usually it is at the level of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus and uh, usually it should in where this uh, the uh, lateral tibial spine and medial tibial spine get elevated and in between the lateral tibial spine and the medial tibial spine. So you can see uh, ACL uh, concept of there is double bundle is also there. So this is the anterior medial bundle. This is posterior uh, lateral bundle is there. And you can see uh, when the TVL spine get elevated, this insertion part in. So usually ACL is in at the junction of 60% posterior and the 40% anterior. So at the attachment of uh, femur, it is usually vertical. So this is anteromedial and this is posterolateral bundle. It is vertical. And in, it, in full extension, the posterolateral bundle is tight but uh, the posterior uh, anteromedial bundle is little bit lax but once knee get flex you can see the femoral attachment is horizontal get horizontal and this posterior medial uh, this uh, posterior lateral bundle is lax and anteromedial bundle is tight in full 90 degree of flex and you can see again in extension this anteromedial bundle is lax and the posterior lateral bundle is tight so orthoscopically uh, you can diagnose the that this is the torn the meniscus which we have seen in mri in the uh, particularly in the posterior part almost uh, near the root 
so the repair of this part should be done at the same time you can see uh, you can look for the mobility of the meniscus with the probe and this is the acl uh, footprint area and this is uh, the resident ridge anything should be behind that it should any uh, should not be anything anterior to the this resident ridge this is the elevated area on the lateral uh, condyle of the femur anything should be behind this so about the footprint of the acl you can see this is the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus this is the anterior tbl spine medial tbl spine and jig is in between that so uh, the guide wire should be passed with the jig and once it is passed then this would be hold with uh, the uh, mosquito or artery forcep so at the time of drilling with the drill bit of desired diameter according to the graph it should not damage any intra articular structure it should not damage the pcl or any uh, uh, any other structure in the knee so it should be properly hold with the artery forcep and then do the drilling part and it should be very slow here it should not be very fast you can see the and the drill is coming in it between the lateral tibial spine and medial tibial spine and it should be yeah it is in no so once this part is done then the drilling part at the femoral should be done this can be done with the independent guide wire or femoral jig is also available that can be choose i am doing free hand by placing almost around 6 to 7 mm anterior from the posterior wall and the same uh, distance from the articular area so once this get fixed there then you uh, start flexing the knee at this point it should be hyperflex knee should be hyperflex here the knee is hyperflex and the accessory medial portal has been used and once this part is done then the reaming should be done with the four par 4 uh, mm uh, drill bit cannulated and this should be through and through so that uh, uh, the any uh, tight probe or endo button thread can be passed very easily and here you can check by seeing the length of the femoral uh, uh, femoral wall at the same time you can use the depth gauge for measuring the length of this lateral wall and after doing 4 mm you should do a you and the you should do your calculation for the depth with the desired reamer of the graph diameter and usually it should be in between 2.5 to 3 cm 25 to 3 mm uh, length of uh, the graph should be in and so if you are using adjustable loop so do the exact amount of the mm, diameter uh, the length which uh, amount of graph you want to in and if you are doing the fixed loop then you should add 10 mm to that so you can see around 30 mm of on the drilling of uh, the uh, turn, uh, wall has been done so next is uh, after drilling this the pass the thread over the bead pin through which you, uh, we have started the lateral uh, part of uh, the femur and once this is in then you can take this thread uh, through the grasper to the anterior part of the yeah through the grasper uh, you can we can take this to the outside the tibia in the anterior part then the next is about the graft calculation is i am using the adjustable loop so diameter of the femoral tunnel was around 40 mm so this was marked at the same time around 2.5 25 mm of the graft minimum graft i want to be in so that marking a has been done and then uh, take the graft take the graft uh, through the thread loop that we have taken over the anterior part of the tibia from the gasper then take uh, the all the thread from the lateral cortex of the femur so here you can see this uh, all the thread part is going the on the lateral side of the femur 
and and now this uh, the pulling of this thread has been done uh, here you should make the longitudinally this button it should not be transverse otherwise this will not pass through uh, the uh, hole that we have made but here you can see the inter articular structure this the button is going in and this uh, uh, button is going in. and this the loop has to be go in till the mark what we have met uh, outside the uh, outside the knee so this is the mark till this mark the thread should be in only after that the button will be flipped on the lateral cortex of the femur so it is still out it means we need to pull more in so uh, this is getting pulled so now this almost still uh, the here the button is flipped there we, yeah so here the button is flipped there you can pull from outside and you can see this is not coming coming uh, out so at this place you can transfer your uh, viewing portal from anterolateral portal to the anteromedial portal so that you can look into the tunnel that there is a uh, button is not inside the tunnel it is completely outside the tunnel which is flipped over the wall so this exact view of tunnel you can uh, see from the uh, from the uh, anteromedial portal so this part has been done and uh, so after that you start pulling the uh, the loop loop part is there so you start pulling that and this gets sorted and graft will go inside in uh, uh, into the uh, uh, the tunnel into the femoral condyle so you start pulling that so you can see this is getting pulled the graft is coming in so this is graft is getting coming in doing pulling part so again pulling should be done in the mark of the graft is in so since it is a adjustable loop so your loop gets sorted and graft is getting in so once this part has been done so fixation of the graft over the tibia should be done in around 30 degree of knee flexion with a screw usually one side bigger if it is very osteoporotic then the two sides bigger at the same time your other hand should give the posterior dot uh, part over the tibia so your tibia should be moved posteriorly one uh, assistant should hold the graft very tight and then you insert your screw in and then you can see the final graft is there there is no any lax part is there this is the remnant acl whatever the left it was and this is the posterior posterior root of the meniscus was repaired with two anchor suture anchor thank you okay so any questions From the DNB. Yes, good evening. Hello. Uh, sir, uh, what is double bundle ACL this reconstruction? Reconstruction, sir. Uh, Asking the question. Uh, Friday, who came with the concept of double bundle reconstruction uh, in early, early uh, this two thousand, two thousand ten around two thousand nine ten it was very uh, full fledged. So. double bundle reconstruction concept is that the posterior lateral bundle help in uh, preventing the pivoting uh, because uh, almost 30% of the post acl reconstruction patient was having this pivot shift test positive so he demonstrated that the posterior lateral bundle help in prevention of uh, this uh, pivot shift phenomena in the lab but the same thing was not in vivo even after double bundle reconstruction the bundle i have shown to you that one is antero medial bundle another is the posterior lateral bundle but even the posterior uh, this pivot shift was positive even after reconstruction of the double bundle so 
recently concept of the enterolateral ligament or enterolateral complex is there and the researcher said this help in prevention of uh, the pivoting of the knee yeah i think basically uh, the double bundle uh, repair or reconstruction started with the idea to try and restore the acl to what the normal acl is in that it has two separate bundles in slightly different directions which are taut in different degrees of flexion or extension as was mentioned uh, now theoretically very good uh in terms of the embryonic development of the acl probably some rationale to it but in terms of practical difference or actually achieving something better than the standard uh, acl reconstruction it wasn't very successful so i don't think many people are doing that anymore i think this was in vogue a few years ago and now it's gone out of vogue like many other techniques in orthopedics Amit? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I have five questions in hand, sir. I'll ask them one by one. What exactly, the first question is, sir, what exactly is triangulation? Supposedly, we get a short note on triangulation. So, what exactly is triangulation? So, uh, triangulation is basically your both hand uh, coordination. So, in uh, left hand, there is a scope which illuminate your knee joint. so other hand is working hand through which uh, you work inside the knee joint so your instrument should be in illuminated area in the light area it should not be over the seat or tocar inside the knee so once until unless it's your instrument is not in the illuminated area light area you cannot see your uh, working instrument so that is the triangulation sir uh, my next question is what is the difference between the rehab protocol for acl injury patients and multi ligamentous injury patients so usually in acl reconstruction patient we uh, start uh, the range of motion very early at the, the same time weight bearing also around 10% of the weight bearing from day 1 so that at the end of 10 to 12 or 14 days there is full weight bearing of the patient at the same time full range of motion exercises about the multi ligament knee injury all the paper are agree with the weight bearing should started after range of motion there is a lot of variation uh, somebody says it should be started from the day 0 and somebody say it should be started after 6 week what i do at our center we start full range of uh, early range of motion from the 2 weeks from the day of suture removal because we usually do all the ligament reconstruction in single stage most of the time almost 90% so in our finding there was a stiffness was the most common complication so we start mobilizing range of motion exercise after 2 weeks so that at the end of 6 week there should be full range of motion exercise to the patient in case of multi ligament but wet wearing in multi ligament always should be after 6 week or 2 month so is there a point in giving them a brace which you can uh, monitor the range of motion that you allow yeah range of motion neck like brace is there which can be locked whatever the amount you want that can be given in such type of patient this month so do you use them for this i no don't use because it's too costly almost five times the price of the simple base i uh, i i advise the patient with the passive knee bending by uh, explaining about the angle of the knee so patient do it by himself by placing the hand below the thigh and taking passively up and if this all this all angle get increased 10 day 10 around 10 degree every day in case of acl so it's non weight bearing for 6 weeks is it non weight bearing for 6 week in multi ligament in acl the 10% weight bearing from no, no, the no, not acl i'm talking multi ligament yes. and then you start partial weight bearing or full weight bearing partial weight bearing so that at the end of 2 and 1/2 month to 3 month it's full weight bearing particularly acl pcl or collateral associated so when you say partial weight bearing how much weight bearing do you allow 
they start with the 10% of the body weight at 6 day 6 6 week and then progressively increasing uh, i usually check all the ligament uh, stability whether it's loose or not if there is any laxity i find grade 1 laxity is there then i usually delay the weight bearing process yeah amit carry on uh, sir, uh, indications of ACL reconstruction in children? So, should we... most of the time in children, usually it's the spine avulsion. The mid substance uh, lesion is very less. So, uh, in that case, you have to see the age of the child. At the same time, associated injury or laxity, you should check. If clinically it's very uh, frank anterior dart, you can say the grade 3 anterior dart test or pivot shift, pivoting is there. Then the reconstruction in such type of cases should be done. If uh, uh, these two pivoting is not there and little bit anterior posterior laxity is there, then you, you can wait. At the same time, you should observe the patient uh, at regular follow-up, look for any meniscal injury or any condyle lesion at three month or six week interval. And if any of these, uh, then this patient should be operated. Otherwise, you can wait for uh, ACL reconstruction in pediatric patient. But ACL TBL spine avulsion, uh, if it is grade two, S type two or type three, type one can be managed with the cast. But if it type two or type three, it should be uh, surgically treated. Method can be different, whether it's pull through technique or it's uh, a screw technique, then depending upon your preference. Uh, but uh, type 2 or type 2 should be uh, surgical. Or whether it's open or arthroscopic. Open or arthroscopic. I think there hasn't been uh, too much difference uh, in terms of clinical results in children. Yeah. Yeah, so what about question four and five, Amit? Sir, uh, what exactly is ramp lesion? So ramp lesion, one of the my slide you have seen that the tibia is coming anteriorly. So this tibia get stuck in the posterior part uh, with the femur. So many a time this acute injury happen and there is separation of the medial meniscus from the capsule in the posterior part. So this is the acute injury, but many a time when the uh, there is chronic ACL tear is there and the, all the time knee is coming anteriorly, grade 3, uh, almost more than one centimeter of this uh, translation of the tibia is there. The semimembranous violent, uh, this contraction of the semimembranous pull apart all the capsular part from the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. Because you must have seen in anatomy part this semimembranous has having five bands and very a strong band comes to the posterior medial part of the tibia which get attached over the capsule. So this pulls the capsule and tibia is anterior and the semimembranous pulling the capsule posteriorly that leads to uh, creation of the ramp lesion. So if it is a smaller one, not very big, can be managed conservatively but if it is bigger one then it should be uh, uh, sutured by two or three uh, knot from the posterior medial working portal. Uh, this about the posterior medial, uh, this ramp lesion, when there, is, when there will be ramp lesion, patient will see, uh, will give history. Uh, many a times uh, the, my tibia comes very uh, anteriorly and my knee gets stuck. At the same time, if you do the anterior door test, you will feel some clunk type of thing that the meniscus has come anteriorly along with tibia from the capsule. So it's essentially a capsular tab of the meniscus. Yeah. Menisco capsular separation. Yes, okay. Sir, uh, the last question what is windshield wiper and bungee cord effect. Okay. So uh, in the femoral tunnel, you can put the graph and fix either with the screw or the suspensory fixation in which your button get uh, fixed over the femur and the loop is in the tunnel. So this uh, bungee effect means that, uh, uh, this uh, uh, along the tunnel, the graph movement is there. So when you are using the fixed loop, 
for the fixed loop, you have to drill the femoral uh, tunnel extra around 10 millimeter than the amount of graft you want to insert. Suppose you want to insert the graft around 25 millimeter and you are using the fixed loop. In that case, you have to drill the tunnel almost 35 millimeter. Only that your uh, the button will get flipped on the lateral side of the femur. So 10 millimeter of the graph that is uh, that 10 millimeter of tunnel that is left that is vacant in the uh, femur that leads to the longitudinal movement of the graft along the tunnel. So that is called as the bungee effect. So this uh, uh, literature says this prevent the healing of the graft with the bone. And the second is wind zipper effect. Suppose your tunnel diameter is 10 millimeter and your graft is 8 millimeter and you have fixed with the suspensory fixation. So your graft will move sideways because 2 millimeter of the space is left in the tunnel. So appropriate diameter uh, tunnel should be read according to the graft. So this wind zipper effect comes with this uh, when there is uh, diameter disproportion between the reaming and the ground. Wind shield effect. Wind, wind, what's it called? Wind wiper. Wiper effect. Is wiper effect. Wind screen wiper effect. Yeah. Yeah, sir, uh, one question usually asked during the viva that if autograph fall on the floor, what we should do? Uh, uh, till now, it has been happened to me, but uh, in many uh, conferences, and there is two literature over it also. The graph felt over the floor. They take immediately from the floor and put in the betadine solution and continuous irrigation with the uh, betadine solution for 10 minutes, then the continuous irrigation with the normal slide. Nowadays, uh, people are using vancomycin in the hemestring graft because chances of infection with hemestring graft is high in comparison of bone patellar tendon graft. The, what is the reason? Nobody knows. But the recent literature in the JBGS came out and they says if you use vancomycin in your graft, meanwhile you are doing the tunneling part in the femur and tibia. So around 15 minutes of the soak, your graft get soaked with the antibiotic. So chances of infection is almost nil. The same thing we are doing at our center also. And we have seen that the, the hematoma initially that was getting formed is less now recently. We are doing it for almost one month, one year. So you can use that also. You can keep the graft in vancomycin solution for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, one more thing that yeah. one question is sir. Uh, sir, recent advances in uh, arthroscopic ACL reconstruction with reference to creation of the femoral tunnel and femoral fixation method. Can you repeat your question, please? Recent advance advancement in uh, creation of femoral tunnel and femoral fixation method in yes. ACL reconstruction. Yeah. Recent advancement you want to ask, is it? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. So one recent advancement is outside in drilling. That is all uh, uh, all inside matter. You can drill the femoral tunnel from outside to in. There is a specific reamer is there. So that is very uh, uh, very good thing for the pediatric ACL reconstruction when you are doing. In that way, you can escape the physis of uh, the femur. Uh, this is uh, the recent advance. Second uh, advancement is uh, the doing the femoral tunnel by the accessory medial portal. In that way, you are uh, you will be more anatomic uh, because with the trans tibial method, it is very difficult to achieve the normal anatomy of the ACL and. Uh, these two are, uh, and last is the all inside method of ACL reconstruction. In which you uh, use uh, the graft, uh, you do the drilling of the femur, only the amount of the tunnel you want to, because there is no need to drill 
completely through and through both for the FEMA and the team. Uh, regarding the compartments in room, is, is it uh, one complication of arthroscopy? They have mentioned it in the book. So when we can suspect it? So when you are doing orthoscopic surgery in acute setting, in acute setting means your capsule is torn. Many a time capsule is intact, there is no problem. But once your capsule is torn, so that so there is chances of extra vessation of fluid from the posterior part of the knee joint into the calf muscle. And in early days, there is chances that you use pump also for uh, putting the water inside the knee joint. So in that cases, there is chances of uh, this uh, compartment syndrome. It is documented. So you should always look for all the sign and symptom of compartment syndrome whenever you are use, doing orthoscopic surgery in acute setting or you are doing orthoscopic surgery for a very long time with the help of pressure pump. Another thing is your bandaging. And bandaging also. That that can if it's too tight, you can get one. So that's something you need to watch out for in all patients. Okay. So, uh, recent advances in the femoral fixation method. Femoral fixation fi method. Yes. Sir. Uh, one is that is the uh, suspensory method is the recent one. Initially, it was used to be fixed with the screws. The recent is suspensory method. That can be the fixed loop or adjustable loop. This is the recent advancement. We, there is many uh, type of fixation of the graft over the femur. It has started with uh, putting a suture disc over the lateral cortex of the femur, doing by open method on the lateral side. Then, as, then comes to the screw part, doing the screw aperture fixation. Then the recent one is the this suspensory fixation method, which may be fixed loop or uh, the adjustable loop, like indo button and tight loop. And how you differentiate healthy and unhealthy tissue on arthroscopy because all everything looks white there. So for the like synovium, sir, plica and all, how to differentiate it from the normal tissue? Until unless it is white, it means it's normal. If it is red, then it means there is inflammation is there. And if it is multiple villi, a small, a small villi is there, then there is chances of infection is there. So until unless it's white, it's tissues are white, fat, fat are yellow, these two color is okay. But if it is red, uh, then egg, red and multiple villi are there, then it means that this is either inflammation or infection. Right. So, any uh, any more questions from the DMB students? Otherwise, I think it's almost six thirty. So, we should. So, we not. Sabdi. Yes, sir. Yeah. You have any doubts? Then you can ask right now. Sir, uh, is there any difference in uh, treatment protocol uh, of uh, the patient with? Uh, chronic ACL insufficiency and acute ACL injury? So if there is chronic ACL tear, so always looks for the associated injury also. Many a time there is meniscus. Ramp is very common nowadays. Initially it was not discussed, so nobody was looking in the posteromedial gutter. Almost it is 30% of the chronic ACL tear, those who are having very lax knee the grade three anterior door test positive. So this chronic ACL should be assessed. At the same time, look for grade three pivot shift is there or no. Because if grade three pivot shift is there, nowadays literature says the chances of re is very high. So you should do something on the lateral uh, side also, like either ALL reconstruction or Lemire procedure. And in case of acute ACL, usually, ACL should be done only after the range of motion is there until unless there is bucket handle, meniscal or meniscal repair needed for that patient. So usually wait for the full range of motion. So uh, though the chances of failing in acute cases is definitely high, 
the recent literature is saying at the same time the chances of cordyceps atrophy is less if you are doing in acute setting but the treatment part is almost same only thing in chronic acl look for associated structure at the same time and do yeah i think that's true i think uh, especially in um, patients who are not athletes you should wait for range of motion because otherwise if you do it straight away the risk of knee stiffness increases because they may not be motivated enough to do the mobilization exercises when there is pain okay, so that's one of the things which is uh, a reason given for delaying it of course in athletes it's a question of time out of the playing field so uh, the uh, sort of uh, concept is slightly different because you want to get them back on the sports field as soon as possible and they are motivated enough to do the exercises in spite of pain uh, the other thing you need to watch out for in the sort of sedentary person is uh, some of them do okay i mean it depends on the amount of instability and if there is uh, not too much instability in the terms that it's mainly just an isolated acl injury you could treat some of them conservatively okay now obviously in the younger patient the trend is towards reconstruction but there are a lot of patients who done reasonably well with conservative treatment as well yes yeah definitely until unless if it is not grade 3 anterior or or exactly fiber the, the, the left type of patient very very yes. just because you get an acl injury reported in the mri is not an indication for surgery okay and one thing about for the dnb people for the acute and chronic for the acute any injury the latchman test is very sensitive and specific and anterior dot test is almost 30% sensitivity in acute setting but in chronic cases anterior dot test is very uh, sensitive as well as specific the fiber safety test is very uh, specific for acl rt yeah so the pivot shift if positive is an indication for surgery because it means that the joint is subluxing and so that's a situation where conservative treatment will have problems so that's something if you can elicit clinically is a good thing i mean is good is important because then it helps you in your decision making okay so if that someone is waiting for the surgery like during the lockdown what is the advice for them there is some indication of the build, build up your quadriceps and hamstrings yeah and at the same time they should avoid any pivoting yeah. activity resting pivoting activities should be and uh, maybe in the in the early stages brace it as well building quadriceps is very important okay so i think we should uh, Call it a day. Thanks, uh, Arvind, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. No, no, not at all. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you, sir.